So every week there seems to be some kind of health promotion day or some kind of special fundraising event. So I just thought it would be worthwhile looking at how we go about maximising the PR value for those events and for those special health days. Now the first point to make is that regardless of whether it's Heart Week, World No Tobacco Day, Asthma Week, whatever the case may be, is that those days and weeks obviously are not health stories in themselves. Um, most journalists don't really care that a particular day has been allocated to celebrate a particular disease or a particular condition. Um, in fact, most journalists also understand that a lot of those days are completely contrived um, and have no real kind of substantial backing to them. So if you're wanting to promote a day like that, the onus and the emphasis is really on you to be able to develop a news package which uses the promotional day as a bit of a backdrop. So your job then is to pull together a proper package. So a package for news which might incorporate a special event, um, some expert spokespeople, some research which helps deliver a news angle, uh, some case studies to help personalise what you're trying to get across. Um, and so I also thought it's worth looking at a recent example. Uh, we worked with um, guide dogs on International Guide Dog Awareness Day and uh, while there's lots of uh, cute and fluffy dogs associated with International Guide Dog Day, you've still got to pull together a pretty decent news package to get some media interest. So clearly International Guide Dog Day is not a news story in and of itself. So guide dogs have pulled together a new campaign and the aim of that campaign was to encourage restaurants to showcase their support for guide dogs in, in restaurants and cafes. And the campaign was called Guide Dogs Welcome Here. So having decided that we were going to launch a new campaign on that day, we again need to think about what sort of news package could be built around this. So the news package that we had together was some new research, which showed that one in three people didn't understand that it was okay for guide dogs to go into restaurants. We had some third party support from the City of Sydney Council and from the Federal Disability Commissioner uh, to help us explain to media how important this campaign was. And also, of course, um, some guide dog users to help personalise the issues of uh, discrimination and prejudice that the campaign was aiming to address. And so one of the tricky things about promotional days is that if newspapers are going to um, uh, cover those days and report on those days, they need something in advance uh, because obviously if you're a newspaper you've got to prepare the story before. So what we did in this case was to convene a, a separate photo, an interview opportunity with the Federal Disability Commissioner on the day before with Australian Associated Press and it also gave us an opportunity to take some photos and to make those more widely available to media. So having secured an Australian Associated Press story, we were then able to have a really positive lead-in to our major launch event, which was a key restaurant in the city. So the event really was put on primarily for broadcast media, uh, TV news, radio news, and also some of the trade uh, food media to come down as well. And so that was an opportunity for us to roll out the full package to news media to report on International Guide Dog Day. So people who get the Palin Communications newsletter and um, sometimes uh, read my blogs know that I'm really big on uh, localising stories. And for International Guide Dog Day, we had localised events around New South Wales, in Orange, in Newcastle, in Albury and other places. And those events uh, mirrored in a way um, the event in Sydney and gave those local newspapers and those local TV outlets an opportunity to do something which was more relevant to their local audience. So as you can see through all this, two key themes coming through a day like this, uh, personalising the story through the use of case studies and people prepared to talk about those issues from a personal perspective, but also localising media opportunities um, so that it's not a story which is being driven for every region and every part of New South Wales out of Sydney, but something which is a bit more local for those viewers and those readers. So remember, media are unlikely to be particularly interested in your health day or in your health week unless you can use it as a backdrop to build a much bigger news package. And to reiterate, the elements of that package are likely to be 
some new research which helps you build a news hook, some expert spokespeople who can explain the importance and the relevance of what you're trying to promote, some case studies who can help personalise what's going on, and some events which have the potential to localise these themes so that you're maximising your coverage through the local media. And don't forget, it's all about colour, it's about pictures for the newspapers and it's about footage for the TV. So your big colourful events with plenty of filming and photo opportunities are really important. Anyway, so that's kind of how it works and you've seen today how it worked for International Guide Dog Day. Um, good luck with your next promotional day. I hope it goes well for you and if we can help you at all at Palin Communications www.palin.com.au